I can't get into the specifics right now, but I will say I fully reject Billy's claim that I have defamed him. In no way have I defamed Billy Mitchell. Every statement I have made about him has been based on evidence, and so I will fight this lawsuit in every way possible. He's using his typical bully tactics to silence criticism just like he always has. I will not give him a single penny. I will not delete a single video because I have not defamed Billy Mitchell. Sue me. Take me to court. I don't care. Hello ladies and gents, it's EasyScape, and what you just watched is a now deleted video from the YouTuber Apollo Legend. If you're not sure who Apollo is, he's a speedrunning content creator who has a channel about the same size as my main channel, well known for his videos exposing video game cheaters. This first started with his video 10 speedrunners who were caught cheating, a video which reached massive success and led Apollo down a rabbit hole of creating more exposed videos, most notably including Todd Rogers, Billy Mitchell, and Dark Viper AU. The Dark Viper drama actually had nothing to do with cheating, but I'll expand more on that later, as most of what I want to discuss is about Billy and Todd. I will also mention that I made a twit longer earlier this year, separating myself from Apollo and his content. So if you want to see my full perspective on this topic, I would recommend reading through that either before or after watching this video for additional context. So like I alluded to at the beginning of the video, about a month ago Apollo Legend deleted several of his videos, resulting in 15 million views being removed from his channel. This was all part of a settlement agreement Apollo had with Billy, in which he gave Billy ownership of every Billy Mitchell related video, which from what I counted, was 6 or 7 videos. I'm not exactly sure because I think Apollo deleted at least one of the videos before the settlement. But not only did Apollo delete the videos about Billy Mitchell, he also deleted videos about Todd Rogers regarding his cheated dragster record, and later revoked Guinness World Record, and a video about Dark Viper AU. I'm not exactly sure why Apollo removed the videos about Todd, as there is more than sufficient evidence to prove that his records weren't legitimate, as several of the scores and times he had were literally impossible to be performed. Furthermore, Todd never filed a lawsuit against Apollo like Billy did, so I don't know why he would have felt obligated to do so. It is worth mentioning that Todd did file a lawsuit against Twin Galaxies, the website that formerly hosted his records, for defamation. This was initially filed pro se, but recently it appears Todd has refiled this lawsuit with a lawyer. While we are on the topic of discussing ongoing lawsuits, one of three of Billy's original lawsuits are still active. This would be the $10 million lawsuit he filed against Twin Galaxies for defamation. The other two lawsuits were the $1 million lawsuit with Apollo Legend, which was settled out of court, and another $2 million lawsuit against the Donkey Kong Forum, which removed his scores and contains an evidence package regarding several of Billy's Donkey Kong records. I'll have it linked in the description. This lawsuit expired with Billy never following up on it. If you made your way this far into the video and don't know much about Apollo, Billy, or Todd, but find yourself very invested in the story and want to learn more, I'll be linking videos made by Carl Jobs, which explains the stories from his point of view, as I can't link Apollo's videos for obvious reasons, even if I wanted to. The videos may appear long, but they are about as concise as you can get considering everything that has happened. It's worth mentioning that Carl was also threatened with a lawsuit following his posting of his Billy Mitchell video. You may be surprised to hear about the mass amount of lawsuits Billy hands out, but as somebody who has been following the story for a long time, it's really no surprise to me. Reminder that this is the same guy who filed a defamation lawsuit against the regular show for their character Garrett Bobby Ferguson. I don't know why he would associate himself with a floating head that cries and cheats when it loses at video games, and then make himself look like an even bigger asshat than the cartoon character by suing the cartoon itself, but it is fucking hilarious. Here are the current updates and key dates to look forward to regarding the current lawsuits. October 15th is a hearing to rule on Twin Galaxies anti-slap motion. It's important to note that this suit was filed in California, the state Twin Galaxies is based in, which is one of the many states which have adopted anti-slap laws. These laws are put in place to prevent people from abusing the court system to silence the right of free speech, California being the first state of 30 to enact such a law. If you're unfamiliar with slap suits and anti-slap laws, I will link a video made by John Oliver, which he explains how they work, why they exist, and the consequences of states not adopting anti-slap statutes by using his frivolous law battle with the biggest privately owned coal company in the US as an example. Based on the public information that I know, I would speculate that the court would most likely grant the anti-slap motion as it's very difficult to prove defamation as a public figure, which Billy Mitchell definitely is. If it were to be granted, it could potentially end up costing Billy tens of thousands of dollars or even over a hundred thousand dollars depending on the court's decision. The next update to look forward to would be to see if Billy follows up on his notice that he sent to Carl Jobs, demanding the deletion of his video about him and also requesting an apology and $150,000 Australian in damages. The video Billy was referring to was Carl's video about Guinness World Records, which featured a small cameo of Billy Mitchell since Guinness decided to reinstate his records with no publicly stated evidence. 
Since the notice, Carl doubled down on his claims about Billy, making a nearly 30 minute video documenting his perspective on Billy's records and lawsuits, which I'm assuming Billy isn't too happy about. So far nothing has escalated yet, but I'd recommend following Carl Jobs and myself on Twitter, and we'll try to keep you guys updated as much as we can. Lastly, we'll have to see what happens with the Todd Rogers suit on Twin Galaxies, but unfortunately I don't have much information on that, as it's very recent. I'm assuming Twin Galaxies will go public with more information at some point, but I have no idea what kind of evidence he could have other than witness testimony, which doesn't really hold up when we are dealing with physically impossible scores. Now that you are all hopefully more informed on the situation as a whole, let's go back to discussing Apollo Legend and a settlement. It may come to a surprise to many that Apollo agreed to a settlement in the first place that resulted in him not only transferring ownership of his own content to Billy Mitchell, but also most likely paying him a large settlement. Unfortunately, I don't have any solid proof, as this was settled out of court, and honestly, I'm not sure if we'll ever know for sure unless one of them goes public with information. But it's really the only outcome that makes sense to me. From what I've heard, and again, I can't confirm anything unless it comes directly out of Billy's mouth, but there is a good chance his lawyer is working pro bono, or more accurately, on contingency. If this were the case, the only way the lawyer would be making any money is if they got it from their settlement agreements or by winning the defamation suits. It would also explain why Billy is able to afford to sue so many people, and why he initially filed the suits pro se, and then later refiled with a lawyer. If it isn't costing him anything, then he can afford to sue as many people as he likes. But I would like to reiterate again that I cannot confirm any of this information, but with what I'm about to discuss, it really does not matter. Apollo initially came off to me as some stoner dude who likes to speedrun video games, and make videos about it, kind of like someone else I know. But he is not at all who he appears to be. Apollo is vindictive and unapologetic. Convincing Apollo he is wrong after he has already made up his mind is nearly impossible, and even if he is proven wrong and public perception shifts, he deletes all evidence of it happening and never apologizes. He's done this several times. In 2016, Apollo was posting speedrunning highlight reels, which in no way fell under fair use. They were not transformative and contained no additional commentary. Most people were fine with him posting the highlights as they were essentially free advertisement, and he always credited the streamers in the description. However, this perception changed when Apollo started uploading super salty speedrunner highlights, which painted speedrunners in a more negative light than in his previous videos. Personally, I have no issue with the videos conceptually, but the videos were being used for profit, without consent, and at the expense of several different streamers. Bouncy Boy was an outspoken voice on the matter, and denounced Apollo's content publicly on Twitter. Apollo probably didn't like Bouncy Boy too much after that, as whenever Bouncy Boy got called out for other drama on Twitter, Apollo didn't hesitate to jump on the hate wagon. In a now deleted tweet, Apollo says, At Bouncy Boy is a self-obsessed me monster. Me, me, I, me, myself, I, everyone look over here. Most unbearable personality in speedrunning. This ultimately backfired for Apollo, as the original poster of that thread he was responding to pointed out that most of the speedrunning community at the time actually found him insufferable. It also turns out that the person Apollo deemed as the most unbearable personality in speedrunning was featured in one of his videos. So after Apollo shit talked him on Twitter, Bouncy Boy decided to file a DMCA claim against him. And while I personally feel Bouncy Boy should have reached out requesting him to remove the content he posted of him before filing a DMCA, what can you really expect after stealing somebody's content and then disrespecting them publicly? After that, another speedrunner filed a DMCA claim, and Apollo's channel was in jeopardy. In response to this, Apollo quickly deleted or privated all of the videos and only left up his commentary videos which fell under fair use. Again, I'm not necessarily siding with what Bouncy Boy did, but he was well within his right to file the claim if he wanted to. It was his content. This is where we see the vindictive side of Apollo, where even when he's clearly in the wrong, he will shift the narrative, leave out context, and attack the character of the opposing side. In this case, apparently Apollo disagreed that the videos didn't fall under fair use, as in a now deleted video, he tries to prove that Bouncy Boy is a hypocrite. I should probably mention that Apollo is not the commentator in the video, but it was posted on his channel, and he co-signs everything the commentator says, stating that it's a brilliant video. So let's see. Based on their evidence, is Bouncy Boy actually a hypocrite? First of all, they completely leave out Apollo's tweet, which is probably what made Bouncy Boy file the DMCA in the first place, as the highlight reel was already up for a while. But Bouncy Boy's claim was filed only two days after Apollo's tweet. Just another example of Apollo purposely leaving out evidence. Then the commentator points out Bouncy Boy's pace spin, which explained why he DMCA'd Apollo in the first place. In the first paragraph, he points out Bouncy Boy is a hypocrite for supporting GR Smash's content because that content wasn't transformative either. Which is technically true, but this wasn't Bouncy Boy's argument in the first place. He isn't anti highlight reels. He clearly stated that his issue was that the content didn't fall under fair use and that Apollo never asked for permission to use it. 
You can go to the first GR Smash video they show on screen, which by now is 4 years old, and the description states that they had permission for posting the videos, whereas Apollo did not. Next they claim Bouncy Boy was not the copyright owner of his own content, but Nintendo was because he was playing Super Mario Sunshine. Based on their logic here, since Bouncy Boy isn't the copyright holder of his own content, you're allowed to repost as much of his content as you like without permission. Well gee Apollo, if that's the case, why did you delete every single highlight video on your channel that didn't fall under fair use instead of just counterclaiming if you were legally allowed to in the first place? I mean none of the speedrunners own the rights to their content apparently. In fact, why even edit the content in the first place? You should just start posting their speedruns in full instead. Just think of all of the exposure you'd be bringing to the entire community. You would become the man that saves speedrunning. A true hero to the community. Then they end the video with explaining that Bouncy Boy is a hypocrite because a few days later following the copyright claim, he posted his own speedrunning highlight reel featuring a bunch of Super Mario Sunshine speedrunners getting mad at their runs as a jab at Apollo. I don't even understand how this is hypocritical as he got permission for every single clip which was Bouncy Boy's argument in the first place. In this case Apollo unfairly attacks the character of Bouncy Boy, uses straw man arguments to misrepresent Bouncy Boy's criticism, and misrepresents copyright law to make it seem like he was in the right. The entire video is literally propaganda. And to the surprise of literally no one, Apollo deleted all remnants of this drama happening in the first place, which made it very difficult for me to dig up. He deleted all of his tweets and videos including the one calling Bouncy Boy a hypocrite and has never bothered to apologize despite clearly being in the wrong here. This is a common trend with Apollo, and I can give more recent examples, but the main reason for me digging up the several year old drama is to prove that since then Apollo hasn't changed at all. Not even a little bit. Let me explain his strategy when it comes to dealing with online criticism. So first of all, Apollo seems to dislike anyone that criticizes him regardless if the criticism is valid or not. If you openly disagree with Apollo and have a significant following that could change the public's perception of him, he will find a way to go after you. Because clearly, it isn't the fault of Apollo if he does something that people don't agree with, but it's actually your fault for pointing it out. Secondly, if the criticism is valid and too difficult for Apollo to defend himself against, he will switch to offense and find a way to attack you instead. In this case, he waited until Bouncy Boy was dealing with other community drama to go after him. In other cases, he's dug up dirt and publicly exposed people that disagreed with him and has even flown out to events for the sole purpose to harass people. The next step is simple. When he eventually receives backlash for attacking those that are criticizing him, even to the point they threaten him legally, he then plays a victim and misrepresents the criticisms against him to make the other party look as bad as possible and or goes back to step 2 and double downs his offense. And if Apollo still can't prove his case and even his own audience disagrees with him, he just deletes all evidence and pretends nothing happened in the first place. Not because he actually thinks he's in the wrong, but because he doesn't like dealing with negative criticism despite being the bearer of several videos that are overtly critical of so many people. He has never apologized or had any admission of guilt as that would involve taking responsibility for his wrongdoing, which I have never seen him do, at least when it actually matters. Keep all this in mind as I discuss Apollo's involvement with Billy Mitchell. Apollo took notice of how popular videos about cheating and competitive gaming were and after his first video, that's when he began creating his hit pieces. He wanted to become the Keemstar of speedrunning. Hell, Keemstar even had him on his show, which only further emboldened him towards his behavior. Whenever Apollo had officially became a drama channel, I feel like he lost a lot of his credibility, as drama channels can only operate if they are able to consistently find drama. This entirely changed his approach for his videos. You see, Apollo doesn't make his videos to find out if someone is a cheater or not, he starts his research by already believing that the individual is guilty. This makes him only seek out evidence that suits his narrative, and leave out anything that would prove him otherwise. This also causes him to speculate the motives of one's actions to always be the worst case scenario, when in reality there are probably several different outcomes, but Apollo's bias doesn't allow him to rationalize those possible outcomes. This is not me saying that the videos about Todd Rogers and Billy Mitchell are legitimate or not, my point is that Apollo is so biased when he approaches his videos and forcing narratives, it is impossible to tell which details are true or false as he operates on bad faith, and this includes him purposely cropping out evidence which most people who watch his videos wouldn't be able to notice. Because 100% of their knowledge on the topic comes from Apollo, and they are relying exclusively on his journalism. I know you all would probably like me to point out specific examples in Apollo's videos about Billy and Todd, but I would rather not speculate on these as it could give legal ammunition to both of them, and that is not something I'm willing to do. But even Todd questions Apollo's neutrality when he is contacted by him as well. Just listen to this excerpt from one of his videos. I'm not a hard person to reach. My phone number, email, and Facebook are easy to obtain, and I don't recall anyone having trouble contacting me. This is just precious. He's mad that OmniGamer didn't contact him before analyzing the code of the game. 
But what's hilarious is I contacted him before making my video and he didn't want to do an interview because he didn't trust me. And then he started trying to make me feel bad by telling me about his family. This guy will say absolutely anything to make himself look good and his opponents look bad. He doesn't use words as a way to convey his thoughts and opinions. He uses them as a tool to manipulate people. This is a DM from a representative of Empire Arcadia when Apollo contacted their CEO Triforce implying that he was a cheater with no concrete evidence. To clarify, I don't like Todd or Triforce, but they had every right to be apprehensive when dealing with Apollo as he could easily make up lies about them and nobody would ever know any different. So Apollo started off by posting his Todd Rogers video which received high praise from the online community, getting millions of views, and reached the front page of r slash videos with over 75,000 upvotes. Todd Rogers was very submissive about the videos and Twin Galaxy's decision, and never directly went after Apollo. Apollo then posted a video making fun of Todd for losing his record, and decided to accept partial credit for his downfall, even though it was ultimately Twin Galaxy's decision. Once that was over, he shifted his target to Billy Mitchell, who was also being exposed for cheating online. In this case, we can disregard the first step of how Apollo deals with online criticism, as Billy had no idea who Apollo was. Apollo was on an inevitable warpath to take down anyone that had evidence of cheating in arcade gaming, and people were asking for more. Following his Billy Mitchell video, he received similar praise to his Todd Rogers video, but this would be his biggest exposed video yet. Billy had records in some of the most popular arcade games in the world, including Donkey Kong and Pac-Man, and even had a documentary made about him. Billy was huge in comparison to Todd, both in popularity and ego. Following Apollo making the video, he caught wind of a public event that Billy would be attending and made a last minute decision to book a flight, rent a suit, and fly out to Florida to interview Billy while dressed as him. A few weeks following Apollo's visit, an article was posted to Twin Galaxies that a rumor was circulating that he may face legal repercussions for his visit. Despite hearing a warm welcoming from Billy's friend Robert Childs, the owner of the venue the event was at, the article says multiple anonymous sources painted a different picture. The article states that Apollo was carrying hidden audio devices and tweeted admitting that someone else at the event was with him and recorded several gigabytes of video. I remember Apollo was accompanied by Ryan Lockwood and at least one other person to the event. And yes, this is the same Ryan Lockwood all of you are thinking about. For the record, I don't think he was the one recording because he was hitting on Robert Child's daughter or something. I really can't remember. But it was this stunt that would initiate Billy to legally threaten Apollo and is even mentioned in the defamation suit despite not really falling under the grounds for defamation. In Robert Child's own words, he stated yes, Apollo did break numerous laws that night, and he is currently learning what a good attorney is capable of. Like I said before, this was mentioned in the defamation suit, but ultimately Apollo was never actually sued for it, but it did seem to be enough to scare him. Following this news was another regular disappearance from Apollo, which was no surprise for me, as he would always go on random hiatuses for months at a time. And with the stress of a potential lawsuit glooming over him, this seemed totally understandable. Still, I was very surprised by Apollo's silence, as it seemed like he was planning on some major exposed video, at least going by his Twitter, but this legal threat halted that completely. This was all around the same time Apollo's speedrunning event, Oceanside, was supposed to occur. And leading up to the event, even before all of the Billy Mitchell stuff happened, Apollo had extremely poor communication with the attendees, and they were all left completely in the dark with what was happening with the event. This was most likely due to how much time the exposed videos of Todd and Billy took up as they were posted only two months before the event. We were told by a close friend that the biggest reason for the lack of communication was because he was sick and that he would be back soon. But if he was able to communicate that much, why weren't there any updates for over a month so close to the event? Several weeks after this update is when we would finally hear back from Apollo, and at this point we are in the third step of how Apollo deals with online criticism, which is yet again, when someone threatens him legally, Apollo is not submissive. He doubles down his offense, and in this case quite literally. The first thing he posts is him sitting at an airport with a boarding pass in his hand, blaming Billy entirely for the failure of Oceanside, and that he is not going to the event from a journalistic standpoint, he is attending simply to troll Billy. I don't know how Apollo convinced himself that the failures of Oceanside resided solely on Billy's shoulders, other than that it could absolve him of responsibility for the event failing. And don't get me wrong, Billy was probably 50% of the reasoning for the event not happening, but to be honest, I don't think Oceanside would have happened in the first place, irrespective of the legal threats. The only thing that was ever 100% confirmed for the event was the venue and four or five guests. No plane tickets, no equipment as far as I knew, or means of transporting it to the event, no communication, hell we didn't even know what we'd be streaming other than a handful of ideas. At some point Beast Coast and Esports Organization signed several speedrunners and prevented them from attending the event, and honestly I can't recall many of the details behind that decision, but yeah. 
No matter what happened, Oceanside was never going to happen, and even if it somehow did, in my opinion, it most likely would have been a train wreck. It seemed bizarre that Apollo would put the blame entirely on Billy, and then fly out to another event with the sole purpose of trolling him, but that's what he did. And from what I could tell, it didn't seem like he caused any problems at the event, at least nothing I heard about, and was at least pretending to be nice to Billy's crew, but this just seemed so desperate, almost as if Apollo was egging Billy on to actually sue him. Okay, you all know where I'm going with this, I'll cut you the chase. In early 2020, Apollo was officially sued by Billy Mitchell for defamation. However, instead of being quiet like the first time Billy threatened him, following the lawsuit, Apollo posted this video, Angry Cheater Sues Me for $1 Million, which is where the clip from the beginning of this video was taken from. I feel like most people, when approached with a $1 million lawsuit, would spend most of their time and resources building up their defense. But Apollo was confident enough that he did not defame Billy in any way and had enough resources to defend himself without community fundraising. However, Apollo did create a GoFundMe campaign, not to help defend himself in the lawsuit, but to create a collective defamation case against Billy for his alleged lies against several people in the retro arcade community. Apollo wanted to fight fire with fire, and it's difficult to understand Apollo's motives here. Was he really going to sue Billy to defend those that Billy had defamed publicly, or was it to make Billy suffer in the same way Billy was trying to make him suffer? Or was it a bit of both? Compared to the Oceanside GoFundMe, which raised less than $2,000, this GoFundMe raised $28,000 in a remarkably short period of time. Listen to Apollo here talk about the GoFundMe and what its specific purpose was for. Not only do I believe these lawsuits are fraudulent, I believe Billy is in fact guilty of defaming numerous people, including Dwayne Richard, Wes Copeland, Jeremy Young, Robert Merchek, Catherine Despira, myself, and others. It's time to stop Billy once and for all. Not only will I beat his baseless lawsuit, but I plan to simultaneously pursue a collective defamation case against Billy for all the lies that he spread. I believe Billy has lied about so many people with such disregard for their well-being that we stand a very good chance of winning this case. We are bringing together the largest group of people we can. Individually, we might not be able to defend ourselves, but by joining all together with one goal, we can finally put a stop to all this pain this man has caused. Now, I really hate to do this at a time when so many people are struggling to pay their rent, but I have enough problems dealing with my own defense as it is I just don't have the money to fund this action. I have an attorney who's willing and ready to file the suit against Billy as soon as I'm able to pay him. He says the case will cost $10,000 at most. He wants a full down payment and then he draws from that according to his work. I've created a GoFundMe page to raise funds for this cause. We need $10,000 to fund this action. Again, this is not for my defense. I'm taking care of that myself. This is specifically to fund the lawsuit against Billy. Those of you who contribute 10 US dollars or more will get a digital copy of Dwayne's new documentary, The Verdict Is. The next day after this video was posted, Apollo updated his GoFundMe supporters with this video. When I made this GoFundMe, I thought we could probably reach the goal by the end of the month. I had no idea we were going to break it in six hours. At the time of recording, we've now raised $20,000 in just over two days. Because we've gone over the goal so much, I want to explain how the excess money will be used. So $10,000 goes to the attorney. Also, Dwayne is putting a ton of time and effort into making this documentary. And because it was a donation incentive for the fundraiser, I told him if there was any leftover money, I would pay him a fee. After all of that, I'll take any leftover money and I'll give a random person $50 every day until it's gone. I'm not keeping any of this money for myself. I'm honored that you guys would trust me in this way, so I want to be 100% transparent about this process. I will post receipts of everything when this is all done. Rest assured, Billy Mitchell will be sued. We're compiling evidence as fast as possible to prepare the lawsuit. I plan to file this lawsuit with the same attorney who's defending me, but we're going to do more in-depth research first to make sure he's the right fit for the case. I really can't thank you guys enough for all that you've done. I really hope to make you all proud. Love you all. Stay safe. Two days after that, Apollo posted this video. So let me explain to you guys how I ended up on this idea of suing Billy Mitchell. As we all know, Billy is a serial liar. I could show you guys lies he's told for hours. I probably already have. There are several people related to this situation who feel they've been defamed. And then in a private message, Jace Hall, the owner of Twin Galaxies, suggested that I look into these claims. And so I start looking through all of Billy's lawsuits, and I find falsehood after falsehood. I had already found a lawyer for my defense, and I asked him if he would be willing to file the suit against Billy. He was the one who gave me the $10,000 price tag. So at that point, I felt really good about our case. I launched the GoFundMe, and it was a huge success. 
It was at that point that we needed to decide on a final attorney. We almost moved forward with my attorney in Florida, but we were actually able to get the contact information of Twin Galaxies' attorney. This guy was already well-educated on the case, so he was an obvious guy to talk to. When I spoke with him, he thought some of Billy claims might be defamatory if it were not for the fact that they were printed as part of a lawsuit. You see, in order to make your case in court, you have to be given a little leeway, which makes it harder to claim defamation for these statements. And so now I'm confused. Jace suggested to multiple people that we look into the possibility of suing Billy, which had me assume that he had floated this past his attorney. But when I talked to his lawyer, the guy doesn't think we have a case. And that's my fault for assuming anything. This campaign was my responsibility first and foremost, and that's why I'm giving everyone's money back. Twin Galaxy's attorney is by far the most qualified person for this case. He is more educated on the details than any other, and he has a great understanding on this area of law. If he doesn't think we have a case, then I'd rather not just piss your money away with some attorney who will file just for the money. There are still some statements that I believe are defamatory, but it's not nearly as strong as a case as I thought. We could pursue this further, but I get the feeling I'm being used. Maybe this is just what Billy wants. Maybe this is just what Jace wants. I need to be measured in my response. I'm sitting in the winning position and I shouldn't mess that up. It's better that I admit my mistake now than later. Refunds are going to take a few days. GoFundMe's response time is really bad, but I assure you those will get sent out. I hope you all can understand. I'm very sorry. Stay safe. In a way, I sort of feel bad for Apollo in this case. It seems like an honest mistake. Apollo isn't a lawyer and trusted the advice of his and Jace Hall's lawyer, who he assumed he was relaying legal advice from, and felt like he may be playing right into Billy Mitchell's hands by creating even more videos about him to further fuel his case. So the right thing for Apollo to do would be to refund the GoFundMe backers and focus on his defense, which is what he said he'd do. Within the next two months, he would provide two updates about the GoFundMe on his YouTube community page. Apparently, Apollo was having issues with the refunds both on his bank side and GoFundMe's due to the slow response time from their support, and honestly, I believe him. But here's the problem with all of this. I have been digging around for over a month to find any evidence of Apollo refunding even a single GoFundMe backer and have turned up empty-handed. I've read through every comment on his YouTube community tab, reached out to acquaintances of Apollo, and have reached out to him in every way I possibly could other than literally showing up on his doorstep and there seems to be no indicators that Apollo has refunded anybody or has any plans to do so. So if the money was never refunded, what happened to it? Billy Mitchell was never sued, Dwayne Richards' documentary was either never produced, never sent out, or both, and Apollo never gave out $50 a day to random people. Well, I have a couple of possible outcomes, but none of them are good. Like I mentioned at the start of the video, there's a good chance that Apollo had to pay Billy a large amount of money in the settlement, and rumors online suggest it to be anywhere from ten dollars to $50,000 if this is what happened. This would mean that the GoFundMe money that was raised to sue Billy Mitchell was actually used to line his wallet. The alternative is that Apollo was able to settle by transferring the ownership of his videos to Billy and didn't have to pay anything, which in this case means he pocketed the money as there doesn't seem to be any more attempts made to refund it. Either outcome is equally as bad. This isn't the first time he's done this either, as I don't believe he ever refunded anybody that donated to Oceanside either. But from what I saw, a majority of people who donated to it didn't mind he kept it in case Billy pursued a lawsuit, which we all know now that he did. If it weren't for Apollo not creating a pathway to refunding every person who wants their money back from donating to the GoFundMe, I would have never created this video. But Apollo needs to be held responsible for this. He effectively scammed over a thousand people for $28,000 and potentially use the money for the opposite purpose that it was raised for. I'm sure not every person that donated wants their money back and doesn't mind that he used it in the settlement, but this is more about the principle. Apollo promised that he would refund everyone, didn't do it, and has remained silent on the issue since he fled from YouTube. Not only this, but what if Billy ends up filing a lawsuit against Carl Jobs and we need to raise money for his defense? How will the community ever trust us again when the last time this happened, the person they raised funds for ran off with the money? Keep in mind the Apollo and Carl cases are not at all the same. Carl is completely innocent in his coverage of Billy Mitchell, whereas Apollo may not have been. I'm not saying Apollo wasn't innocent either, but there must have been some reason he wasn't confident in his case. Apollo's lawsuit was filed in Florida, which has anti-slap laws, so Apollo could have filed for an anti-slap motion, just as when Galaxies did, but he decided to settle out of court. This either could have been because Apollo didn't want the stress of dealing with a lawsuit, or because he wasn't 100% confident with his case, or both. Carl, on the other hand, has no plans of backing down, and if it does come down to him being sued, I will support any fundraiser he creates, and I hope you all will do the same. I trust Carl that much to endorse him like this. If you were a backer of Apollo's GoFundMe that was expecting a refund, 
I am truly sorry. The most I can do is hold Apollo accountable for his actions, and to give you all closure, as I'm not sure if we will ever hear from him again, since three months ago, following his drama with Dark Viper AU, Apollo quit YouTube. Most of the drama between Dark Viper and Apollo is documented over on Dark Viper's channel, and a playlist I'll be linking in the description if you want more information on what exactly happened between them, but I will try to summarize it here. In late 2018, Apollo posted a video criticizing Games on Quick's decision to ban a speedrunning YouTuber that was proven to be a white supremacist from their event. You see, Apollo has always had a hate boner for GDQ ever since he started YouTube. Some criticisms of the event he had were valid, but a lot were proven lies. Similarly, he was also good friends with this white supremacist YouTuber for a long time, and I believe it was these preconceived biases that allowed Apollo to create this abomination of a video where he attacks GDQ for their decision and ends it by urging all of his viewers to go subscribe to the white supremacists as a stand against them, all while conveniently leaving out most of the key evidence that supported the ban in the first place. This prompted Dark Viper to create a video exposing Apollo for lying by omission. This was the first time Apollo was ever held accountable for his wrongdoings on YouTube. Sure, many people on Reddit and Twitter that are more deeply involved with the speedrunning community knew about the scandal, but Dark Viper creating these videos were the first time Apollo was exposed in front of a large YouTube audience, and actually stood a good chance to negatively affect his reputation. Apollo later went on a live stream to defend his actions, subtly referencing the criticisms of Dark Viper's video without directly mentioning his name or that his video even existed in the first place. This prompted Dark Viper to make another video calling out Apollo again for being so dismissive of the criticisms against him and doubling down on his takes in the original video. What I'm going to talk about next is going to come off very conspiratorial. I just want to be upfront and transparent about that right away, as this is my opinion and is pure speculation on Apollo's motives. In June of 2020, Dark Viper created another video where he shared his contempt for Apollo's videos as part of his speedrunning rambling series. But this was not a focal part of the video. Only a few weeks later, Apollo linked an unlisted video in a tweet in an attempt to expose Dark Viper for not paying one of his editors. Before this, Apollo was somewhat active online, but also not really because he was still dealing with the Billy Mitchell lawsuit. There didn't seem to be any rational explanation behind publicly exposing Dark Viper when this was something that could have been dealt with in private, but it was Apollo's decision to make public. Maybe I'm wrong and there are more potential reasons for Apollo doing this, but he either did this because he felt Dark Viper wouldn't message him back because of the videos he's made about him in the past, or this was an attempt to get back at Dark Viper for making those videos in the first place. Clearly Apollo wasn't in a position to defend himself as he had already deleted the GDQ video, presumably due to backlash. I mean he had to know he was in the wrong there, but this doesn't mean he still didn't have ill feelings towards Dark Viper for pointing out the issues with the video in the first place. Dark Viper then created a video on his channel explaining that he didn't pay the editor due to lack of competence and not finishing the work. I won't get too into the details between Dark Viper and his editor, because it isn't exactly relevant to the story, and honestly, I don't really care. It's none of my business. If you want the full story, of course, I'll have the videos linked in the description, but here's a short excerpt from Dark Viper's video explaining why he felt Apollo was in the wrong to bring this up. Hello, it is 3am. I don't have much of a voice because I've been crying about Wreckful Suicide. Um, Apollo sent a tweet which he is now deleted because, you know, it's Apollo. If you know anything about him, you, you don't understand. Um, there's this dude who I hired, um, this person here, um, to do five uh, of my episodes of How This We Went Ended, converting them to TikToks, as I, many other people have. I didn't pay him because it was in, because A, he didn't finish the job, and B, it was the most frustrating experience of my entire life. <clears throat> but of course, this this is clearly not something I want to be doing, dealing with today, but Apollo is an asshole. What, what Apollo did is, in 3 a.m. my time, you know, just after the death of Wreckful, which is the last thing I fucking tweeted about, which I'm sure he read, um, he, he puts out a public tweet, doesn't message me about this personally, doesn't want to get more information, just believes 100% what a random fuck on the internet tells him, because that's Apollo legend in a nutshell. And then the second I put out all the evidence showing, yeah, no, this is clearly not what you think, he immediately takes down the tweet, claiming that he wants more information. Bullshit. If this is a guy who wanted more information, he wouldn't have put me on blast on fucking Twitter. No, he wanted to embarrass me at a time that I couldn't respond, and now that he can't, he's all, more, all ears for more information. Fuck Apollo Legend, fuck this main script guy, and just fuck the world. Apollo then posted a video on his channel called This Speedrunner Thinks I'm Scum. Somehow none of the videos that Apollo has made up till this point ever had any lasting effects on his channel. By obscuring facts in his videos and deleting disagreeable content when convenient, 
He has always been able to avoid judgment at just about every turn in his career. But not this time. This video was so absurdly awful that even Apollo's own audience was beginning to question his legitimacy when it came to his videos. Though this speedrunner thinks I'm scum video, and the unlisted video Apollo initially tweeted calling out Dark Viper are now both deleted. Before the deletion of the speedrunner scum video, it had around 13,000 dislikes if I remember correctly, and by the third Dark Viper video, Apollo announced that he was quitting YouTube. I'm going to gloss over the beginning paragraph of Apollo's announcement and discuss it more at the end of this video, as it requires a discussion all on its own, but for now, I'll give my honest opinions about the rest. Apollo states that he never likes starting drama. This just isn't true, plain and simple. Is it possible that Apollo regrets some of, if not most of the drama he's involved himself in, in hindsight? Sure. But Apollo's Twitter bio for a long time was the keem star of speedrunning. He flew out to two events to troll Billy Mitchell, and he's made a sizable income and commendations from the online space for most of the drama videos he's produced. If Apollo didn't like being involved in drama, why was it so common to see him involved with drama? I understood the reason behind some of the videos he made, but in others it came off much more desperate. I experienced this firsthand when dealing with YouTube drama of my own. The first and only drama video I've ever made other than this one is when I exposed Kavera Games for falsely copyright striking a speedrunner and harassing people online. So I understand what it's like to not like being involved with drama and feeling forced into it. GFC essentially lost his job due to Kavera's harassment and nobody was stepping up to the plate to help him or stop Kavera from hurting others. And the only way something would change would be if I were to make a video. Creating that video is one of the most stressful times of my life and then when YouTube made the decision to delete it off YouTube, I was heartbroken. Even though I felt like we succeeded in saving GFC financially, I still had the feeling that Kavera had won. Then came Apollo to save the day and milk the situation for three videos on his channel. Apollo posted the first video on his channel whenever my video got deleted. I got in contact with him right away to thank him for keeping everyone updated. He then posted two additional videos updating people on the situation, which I really didn't want to do anyways, so that was cool. The problem I had was that Apollo never contacted me before posting any of the three videos, which all directly involved me. These videos contained minor information flaws that would have easily been cleared up had he actually contacted me first. But no. Apollo saw drama and began salivating at the idea of jumping in to make fun of Kavera and plug his YouTube membership button. I made it pretty clear in my video that I didn't want people harassing Kavera despite how much I didn't like him. Yet I felt like Apollo was enabling it. And by not messaging me before posting the videos, it felt like he really didn't care about helping me out as much as he just wanted content to post. I think at one point Apollo truly enjoyed speedrunning, but when his hand pain grew too much to continue playing games, and a large portion of the community hated him, it makes sense why his love for it died. Apollo started to care less and less about the best interests for the community, and instead went where the views were. One of my biggest issues with this content was how he overly perpetuated cheating in our community. First of all, this is not me saying cheating isn't a problem in speedrunning. It certainly is. But it is not the most prevalent issue as Apollo makes it out to be. And with what Apollo had planned for his future content, it would have most likely made cheating more accessible to a broader audience. He basically wanted to show and explain how easy it is to cheat at speedrunning, because in his mind that would help the community out by requiring stricter proof methods on leaderboards to further legitimize the hobby. But here's the thing. In order to keep speedrunning open for everyone to participate in, requiring stricter proof standards will never happen with maybe the exception of world record times. By teaching people how to cheat, you will only hurt the community overall. This is something I noticed in the RuneScape community with the YouTuber Sir Pugger making several videos discussing undetectable RuneScape bots. Spoiler alert, these videos didn't actually help the developers prevent botters, but instead created a huge market and influx of those specific bots, and this probably wouldn't have played out any differently. Thank god Apollo never made that video, as there are much better ways to approach this topic without directly teaching people how to cheat. Apollo also claims that he never created content for money, yet there were several times he would censor his videos, leave out information to ensure videos stay monetized, and would often stretch his videos out past the 10 minute mark. One time he did this with footage of his dogs, and the most hilarious example including 3 minutes of Gek speedrun footage at the end of his video to reach the threshold for midroll ads. And when it came to midroll ads, he always inserted the maximum amount YouTube would allow. I'm pretty sure his 10 speedrunners I got caught cheating video alone made around forty to $70,000. I'm not trying to invalidate Apollo's feelings here, but his actions don't exactly reflect his words. Apollo, just because you didn't like every instance of drama you were involved in, doesn't mean you didn't enjoy making drama videos. And just because you didn't maximize your content output for revenue, doesn't mean you didn't care about making money. He also says to continue to criticize him if anyone believes he's done something wrong, so, um, here I am, I guess. 
This video is extremely difficult to make as someone who's been closely involved with Apollo for so long. He's the reason why I started making speedrunning content in the first place. He was basically the pioneer of speedrunning content creation, and since then has inspired an entire new generation of creators. For years I sat back and kept my mouth closed when it came to him doing and saying things I didn't agree with, and honestly, I've always felt guilty about it. Not to say I've never spoken up, but I never expressed strongly enough to Apollo that I really didn't fuck with what he was doing. I just sat on the sidelines and let others like Dark Viper do the dirty work, which I commend him for doing so. Although there is one thing I've spoken up about publicly that Apollo definitely knows about, yet the content continues to exist on his channel. His videos Why I Don't Support Games on Quick and What Happened to Mike Uyama are the two longest standing sources of propaganda existing on his channel today. Even Glink, who was generally on Apollo's side when it came to GDQ bans, pointed out that Apollo was making up lies about the event's finances. Apollo Legend has been an outspoken critic on YouTube against GDQ and their policies. One such topic he's focused on is the financials behind the event and where all the money is really going. He claims that volunteers are being paid, that the charities are keeping a lot of the money for themselves, and that old Mike Uyama is sitting back and collecting checks. Apparently Mike also has mono, and actually if you go on GDQ's website it does mention that Mike is on medical leave. However, what Apollo doesn't mention in his video is that most charities have expenses and operate like this. And actually, both Doctors Without Borders and the Prevent Cancer Foundation, the charities funded by SGDQ and AGDQ respectively, are both highly reputable and well-rated charities. As far as the handling of the money goes, Cool Matty responded to this question in his AMA, claiming that all of the donation money goes directly to the charities. And all of the past attendees I consulted shared their criticisms of Apollo and his video. As for Apollo, I think he does mean well, and he really does want the best for the speedrunning community, but he doesn't go about it in the right way. I think his personal biases skew the direction of his videos, making them less objective. I do agree with many of his points, but one that I heavily disagree with is that the charity money and where it's going, that controversy has become way overblown, and I don't think it's actually a real controversy. Yes, that was me back in early 2018, pointing out Apollo's bullshit in Clink's video, and nothing has really changed since. Part of why I sat on the sidelines is because I always expected some type of character development from Apollo, but like I've proven in this video, since 2016, he hasn't really changed at all. He doesn't accept criticism, he involves himself in drama when he doesn't need to, attacks people when they call him out on his nonsense, and deletes evidence when it all backfires. Apollo had immense potential when it came to content creation, but he involved himself in so much drama that it consumed him in just about every way that you can think. I remember a tweet by Apollo when he asked, do you think it's more important to promote good or fight evil? For some reason, I've spent so much time thinking about this tweet since the first day I saw it. It was the first time I ever saw a side of Apollo that invoked some sort of moral dilemma within him. But ultimately, we know which path he chose. I know there are people that will watch this video and feel as if I'm being too hard on him, or that I'm insinuating way too much, and that's completely fine. When I first started making this video, I wasn't sure if I wanted to remain impartial, but it didn't take me long before I realized it is literally impossible for me to approach this from an unbiased perspective. I ended up deciding that Apollo deserved a video that is made exactly like how Apollo makes videos. And let's not pretend Apollo doesn't have a platform to defend or clarify himself if he wants to. Apollo made his bed, and I'm just pointing out that he did. That's it. I know there are probably quite a few of you that were fans of Apollo's content and are wondering if there is any path of redemption for him. And I'm not going to lie, I really don't know. But if I were Apollo, for starters, he should either explain what happened with the $30,000 in GoFundMe money that he never refunded, and if there is any way that the people who were expecting to get their refunds back could retrieve it. I'm sure not every person would be wanting their money back, even more so if he explains what the funds were used for, but that would probably require coming clean on more details surrounding the settlement. I also think Apollo needs to apologize to all of the people that he's wronged, including Bouncy Boy, Dark Viper AU, the director of operations at GDQ, Matt Merkel, for spreading lies about his event. The founder of GDQ, Mike Uyama, who he made an entire video lying about. All of the GoFundMe people that he scammed, and anybody else that was incessantly harassed because of lies made in his videos. He should also apologize for defending and endorsing a white supremacist, and delete the two videos he published lying about GDQ. I think that all would be a decent start. Even then, Apollo has proved himself untrustworthy with his journalism, and could never return to the drama sphere. He would have to rebuild himself, creating entirely different types of content. Once again, I want to reiterate the text that I showed at the beginning of the video. I don't want any of you to attempt to harass Apollo, or anyone else talked about in this video. I am now going to read the first paragraph of Apollo's announcement from YouTube. 
I will mention that this is sensitive material and that Apollo did delete the announcement from his Twitter, but it is something I need to address before finishing this video. I'm done with YouTube. To be clear, this is not meant to deflect criticism or create sympathy. I am just explaining the reality. Last year I came really close to killing myself. I never talked about it because so many people just say that for attention. This was partly due to social media, which has caused great stress to me. It is my responsibility to remove this problem from my life. Anybody that knows me knows that suicide is a sensitive area for me. It's something I've dealt with in ways I don't think I can explain at this moment, or maybe ever. One thing I want to point out from what Apollo said is that you should never assume someone is claiming they are suicidal for attention, but that is the only nitpick I want to point out. Despite how critical this video is, I do not seek death or pain upon Apollo or anyone else. All I hope is that Apollo uses this video to reflect on the criticisms I presented and use it for his own growth as an individual. Despite me sharing all of the bad about Apollo, I don't necessarily think he is a bad person, but his clouded judgment has made him make some bad and hasty decisions that I'm sure he regrets. To Apollo and anyone else watching this video, if you're struggling emotionally, make sure you seek help in your friends, family, or consider professional help. Everyone deserves a right to be happy, but it isn't always the easiest thing to do. I wish Apollo and anyone else out there luck with their personal journeys. And I think this is probably where I should end the video. Just remember that no matter what you may be thinking in an individual moment, that life is worth living. And I'll make sure to remind you of that every time I end my videos when I say I hope you all have a beautiful life. Thank you.